studied fine art painting in the National College of Art and Design in the late 70s. In those days, it was very much frowned upon for a fine artist to work in a craft-based material. So to marry the two together has been the challenge, I think, for me. Uh, the weaving is, comes easy. I don't really even think about that because it's how I see the world. Every time I look at something, I see it in the woven image. For me, once I learned the technique of weaving, it was the meditative process of making that I really enjoyed. As time went on then, and I was working here in Roscommon, even though I loved where I was living and we'd settled in really well, I had a huge sense of being isolated and alone. And at one time I thought I was probably the only one doing tapestry weaving in the country. But I had known Terry Dunn from my college and student days. He's also a master weaver and craft worker. He has been very successful in his career and Terry advised me to go to a workshop which was being run by uh, Joan Baxter, a Scottish weaver, in Pascal de Conning's studio in Cork, the Dance and Tread studio. I did do that and uh, Terry and I spent a week there um, doing a master class that developed into a fabulous project called the Timelines Project. Every new piece I make presents a new challenge depending on the size, the scale, the location and so on. I normally work on an upright frame where I can see the whole image in front of me all the time. That's the way I prefer to work because, as I said, I can see it all in front of me. My design is laid out behind it. Uh, I can make changes as I go along. That's why I couldn't really work with somebody else. I couldn't get someone to help me because I'm making it as I go and making the changes that are needed as I go. Uh, the materials I use to make a tapestry are all natural. Uh, I start with a cotton cord, usually sixes or eights in size, and um, that goes on for the warp. It's very strong. And then I source my uh, wools in Uchtharard in Connemara. So it's Irish, it's all Irish and it's all natural. So I have a lot of work then when I come home with the hanks. I buy random colours and then I have to wind them all into balls. Then if I have a specific job on hand, I'll get some uh, dyed to the specified colours. Weaver's Bazaar in England is where I get them done. Unfortunately, there's nobody in Ireland anymore that is doing that. In order to get the palette I want to use in the piece I'm making, I sometimes blend several different fibres and colours together. I just roll them and make a bobbin to make the tone or the shade that I require. I can use silk at times as well to get a sheen from the finish. I like that kind of uh, shiny effect of mercerized cotton or silk. Last year, 2017 to 18, I did an awful lot of thinking about how I was going to go forward with my practice. And uh, thinking about what tapestry is, how long it takes to make, and what the point of doing it in the first place is anyway. Researching the Bayo tapestry and looking at the shape of it, which is a long, narrow narrative piece about a battle scene, I really realised that that's what I wanted to make next. A piece about something that affected me in the historical context. And the shape then I decided upon was going to be one metre by three metres where you could read the tapestry uh, from one side to the other. I think I was most affected, as most people were over the last few years, by the war in Syria, the refugees, the crisis, the travel, the moving across the Mediterranean Sea, the death, the drownings, all of that. I was hugely upset and worried for all the people and the only way I could express that was through my art. Um, so that became the basis of my uh, tapestry title, Displaced. I was fortunate enough to work with some of the Syrian refugees in Balhadreen, running um, a little workshop with them, teaching them how to weave. And I got to know a lot of their stories as well, some of them very, very tragic. So I wanted to try and get something into my work that would have an emotional response from a viewer. I gave myself a full year to make that piece because the research and the development of the theme took a long time as well. I went to the Strokestown um, Famine Museum to research our own um, displaced people from the 1847s and learned the story of their journey along the Royal Canal and landing in Canada.
In Strokes Town, the emotional link for me was a panel of names. Because they were all driven from their land, this almost 2,000 people, that really affected me hugely. And we know that the ties were taken to part of the immigration scheme. Um, there was the mum, the dad, and the two little children, and we know the little baby had died earlier. And by the time they arrived into Gros Seal, the quarantine station, only the two children were alive still. So. Yeah. So I was trying to tell their story as well in the piece. So there was some connection to Roscommon and the famine and the connection to the Syrians coming today to Roscommon. I began to gather images which I found really upsetting at the time, um, such as these images here that I've just made a little collage of and making some drawings then of people on the move. and some ideas about how to represent Ireland and Syria. So the iron pattern represented Ireland and the henna design and pattern represented Syria. And a mother with her baby on the move, walking, looking towards Europe. These figures here coming from very far away down into the front, I've woven them so that they almost disappear into the sky. They're nameless, faceless, lost people. But as they come forward, they have characters and uh, features. The red line uh, that I decided to introduce into the weaving uh, represents the journey that people took. And sometimes the red comes forward and sometimes it retreats back, uh, mirroring the people and going through them sometimes, but sometimes behind them. In this case, uh, the figure is in front of the line, so that means that person has survived the journey and arrived. Whereas in this case, the figure is, um, the line is in front of the figure. So he's been lost during the journey. I didn't really have the space in the studio to set up the upright frame. My friend again, Terry Don, was selling a loom. And even though I've never worked on a loom before to make a tapestry, I decided I needed to buy that loom. And working on that was a challenge for me because the warp was set to a very close uh, end per inch. It was eight to ten ends per inch, which meant I was using very fine yarns to reproduce the image that I wanted to make. And I could only see about uh, half a metre of it at a time. The rest was wound onto the beam. So I couldn't change what I wanted to change as I went along, which I normally would. However, I was really happy with how it turned out, so it worked out perfectly for me. I started weaving in November and continued working on it then through November, December, January, February, and finished it in March, early April. So it was six months of thinking, talking, walking, drawing, researching and six months of weaving to make that piece. As an artist, there's always a desire to show the work that you've made and have a response from a viewer. And I enjoy that uh, end of it. Sometimes I'm worried about it, but most times um, I enjoy the conversation that comes from a person looking at a piece. Do you know, I really like that, that section. section in there because yeah. it's been flat, it's quite flat, it's quite graphic, and then this bit suddenly goes bang, you know. And that's the very more. weaverly, yes. So I'm glad you but saw that or realised yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So there's a change happening. 
It does make me proud that I, I have made a piece that people are interested in and discussing. But to be honest, I always look at it and think I could do better. I never feel that I have fully reached where I want to reach in my process of making, or my work, or my design, or my colours. I'm always critical. But maybe that's the driver then that makes me want to do the next piece and make it better. And I have a mad desire as well to share my skill and knowledge with other people. So I always want to kind of break down those barriers about what it is I do.